In this lecture, we are going to understand the working of Wheatstone Bridge and other important points. Wheatstone Bridge was invented by Samuel Christie and later on it was improved by Charles Wheatstone and the bridge is named after Charles Wheatstone. In this bridge, we have four resistors, one galvanometer and one voltage source and out of four resistors we are having R1, R2 and R3 are the known resistors. They are the known resistors and the fourth resistor R4 is an unknown resistor and R1 is the fixed resistor R3 is also the fixed resistor but R2 is the variable resistor we can adjust the value of R2 and this is important because we want to calculate the value of unknown resistor R4 now according to the principle when galvanometer shows zero deflection this means potential here and potential here are same and therefore the voltage across the galvanometer is equal to zero and this will happen when the ratio r1 over r2 is same as the ratio r3 over r4 or we can write r1 multiplied to r4 is equal to r2 multiplied to r3 and when this happens voltage across these two points are same and let's say this point is point a this point is point b this point is point c and this one here is point d so the voltage v sub cd is equal to zero when r1 r4 is equal to r2 r3 and when voltage is equal to zero this implies current in this branch is also equal to zero so now we have our condition for the balanced bridge this is very important condition so remember it and we can have this condition by varying r2 keep changing r2 till you have zero deflection shown by the galvanometer when the galvanometer shows zero deflection this means voltage across it is equal to zero and when voltage is zero this implies r1 r4 is equal to r2 r3 and we know the value of r1 value of r2 and the value of r3 so from here we can say that our unknown resistance that is r4 is equal to r2 r3 divided by r1 so in this way we can calculate the unknown resistance using the wheatstone bridge and now we will solve one example problem and in this problem we are required to find the equivalent resistance between the terminals a and b so we are required to find the equivalent resistance between this terminal and this terminal this point here will be point a because it will have the same potential as point a therefore we will call it a similarly this point will be a this point here will be b this point will be b and let's say this point is point c and this point is point d now we will reconstruct our network point a point c point b and point d between point a and d we have 10 ohm resistor therefore we will connect one resistor between a and d having the value 10 ohms then between a and c we have 40 ohm resistor so let's connect one resistor having the value 40 ohms 
Then between B and D we have 5 ohm resistor and between B and C we have 20 ohm resistor. So let us connect 5 ohm resistor between B and D and 20 ohm resistor between C and B and between D and C we have 15 ohm resistor. So in this way we have reconstructed our network and now we have a simple bridge and we will check if the bridge is in balanced condition. Therefore we will multiply 40 by 5 and we will multiply 10 by 20 and you can see that we have 200 200 that's why the bridge is in balanced condition and therefore no current no current will flow through 15 ohm resistor and therefore we can remove it so finally we are having 40 ohm in series with 20 ohm 10 ohm in series with 5 ohm and then they are in parallel so we have our equivalent resistance equal to 40 plus 20 in parallel with 10 plus 5 this is 60 in parallel with 15 which is equal to 60 multiplied to 15 divided by 60 plus 15 and this is equal to 12 so 12 ohm is our equivalent resistance so i hope all the points explained in this lecture is clear to you and the proof of balanced condition is not required in this course it is in 12th standard and if you want the proof you may refer any standard book for 12th class and now i will end this lecture here see you in the next one